If you look at recent pictures of the Starship that is being prepared for a flight test later this month, you will notice a huge launch tower right beside it. This is the Orbital Integration Tower Assembly, or as Elon Musk likes to call it, the Mechazilla. The launch tower won't just be stacking and unstacking the Starship. SpaceX also has other plans with the Mechazilla. One of those plans involves the Orbital Integration Tower Assembly to catch the Starship as it approaches the landing pad. Yes, you heard us right. That mammoth of a tower will be catching orbital rockets as they come back to Earth to land. So let us take a look at the insane engineering behind Orbital Integration Tower Assembly and how SpaceX plans to catch the Super Heavy with this tower. So you might be wondering how, why, and when. We will get to the why and when later, let us first address the how. How will SpaceX use this mammoth of a tower to catch equally huge orbital rockets? The Super Heavy is the booster stage for the Starship system. Its main purpose is to deliver the Starship to orbit and then fall back to Earth and land. During the freefall, Super Heavy will be using massive grid fins to help it steer and orient itself. Super Heavy 4 has four of these fins on its body, two pairs that are 60 degrees apart from each other. And these are no ordinary control surfaces. These are huge fins that weigh about three tons each. These are a little different from the grid fins we saw on the Falcon 9, since these grid fins don't fold in as the fins do on Falcon 9. They can still roll about their axis and help the Super Heavy orient its landing, but they don't fold inwards and are fixed. When the Super Heavy approaches the landing pad and the Orbital Integration Tower Assembly, it orients itself vertically via the grid fins and prepares for a retro-propulsive landing. Since the Super Heavy has a lot of Raptor engines, it can reduce its thrust-to-weight ratio to around 1, which means that this will allow the Super Heavy to hover and adequately orient itself. When the Super Heavy does that, robotic arms will extend from the Orbital Integration Tower Assembly and essentially catch the tower via its grid fins. This way, the Super Heavy will be caught and its grid fins will ensure that the main body doesn't have to bear the impact of the landing. Grid fins are designed to be very robust and structurally strong since they steer the rocket during re-entry. This means that the whole catching procedure will not compromise any part of the rocket. After the rocket is caught by the giant arms, it will be gently put down on the refueling platform and simultaneously be inspected for any significant damage. Once refueled, the lift will place the Super Heavy back on the launching platform and then place the Starship spacecraft, the second stage of the Starship system, on top of it. The whole inspection and refueling process is estimated to take about an hour. After that, the Starship will be ready to launch once more. This method will enable SpaceX's ambitions to use Starship for Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel as well, since now Starship can match turnover times of its rocket airlines to that of commercial airlines. The catching technique will also help SpaceX reach its goal of launching three Starships per day to colonize Mars. SpaceX hopes to use this catching mechanism as a way to reduce the stresses on the rocket as it lands. If SpaceX manages to perform without using landing legs, that will mean the rocket wouldn't be going through various stresses that come with the landing. That means the rocket would almost instantly be ready for redeployment for another Starship launch. Not only that, another drawback of using landing legs is the added weight to the whole rocket. Starship's landing gear amounts to about 10% of its total weight. In theory, if SpaceX could develop another system of safely landing the Super Heavy without using landing legs, that would mean more payloads could be transported per launch. This is precisely what Elon had in mind when he first announced his ideas to catch the Super Heavy. In his tweet, he explained, saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. This is the problem that Mechazilla aims to solve. SpaceX predicts they can increase their Starship's turnaround tremendously if they use the catching mechanism instead of using landing legs. The first everyone heard about Elon's plan for a massive launch tower came back in March of 2021. This was when SpaceX filed for permission from the FAA to build a 469-foot-tall steel truss structure with a 10-foot-long lightning arm. According to the proposal submitted by SpaceX to the FAA, this tower would be used to lift the Starship and the Super Heavy onto the launch mount. 
It also further mentions that this tower will be used to catch the Super Heavy upon its return to Earth. The tower was assembled by using prefabricated segments that were made on a nearby facility. These sections were prefabricated about two miles west of the launch site. The concrete base and first steelwork appear to be approximately about 105 feet tall, while each prefabricated segment is around 60 feet tall. SpaceX is retrofitting the tower with a custom-built mechanism that will do the catching of the Super Heavy. It is not clear if SpaceX will have this system ready before the SN20 launch, but it seems unlikely since there has been no information released by SpaceX or Elon Musk on the subject. Throughout the past few months, we have seen as slowly each section is moved in place and then fitted as the tower rose to new heights. Last month, SpaceX had been hard at work completing the ninth and final section of the launch tower, which is believed to be the roof. Overall, it took nine sections to reach the 440-foot tall height the tower is standing at right now. From all the photographs and drone footage, it seems as if the tower has six vertical rails running along most of its length. Those tracks or rails will support some sort of elevator-like carriage meant to cling to the tower's exterior. The carriage is outfitted with large arms capable of catching, stabilizing, and fueling the Starship. We have seen them being used for stacking the Starship SN20 on top of the Super Heavy 4 booster stage. The Federal Aviation Administration has been publicly critical of the launch tower. The US aviation regulator warned SpaceX that they still have not completed their environmental review of the newly constructed tower. In fact, they might have hinted that they could take the tower down if needs be. Most people believe that SpaceX began construction on the 400-foot tower under the presumption that it would not require any more input from the FAA. As we know, SpaceX had filed with the FAA back in May that they would be making a large launch tower that would also function as a catching mechanism for their incoming Starships or Super Heavy boosters. According to the FAA in a letter published in May, the launch tower may complicate the ongoing environmental review process for the Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle program. The company is building the tower at its own risk. It is possible that changes would have to be made at the launch site, including to the integration towers, to mitigate significant impacts. This was another clue that the FAA was thinking of taking down the tower if they saw that it was something that needed to be done. For now, it seems like SpaceX is still committed to its plan to catch the Super Heavy using its orbital integration tower assembly. The FAA may not be too happy about the whole affair, but even they have to agree that it's a pretty cool way to land an orbital rocket.